Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of colour. So today's video is a difficult one for me to make. This is the products I used to recommend, but no more. And I'm doing this video to mark a hundred million views on this YouTube channel. Can you believe it? Honestly, we started properly a couple of years ago in the middle of COVID and I really didn't know if the channel would take off or if there was a need uh, for people to really want to learn about skin of color and why our skin is different. We used to talk about, we, we, in every single one of my earlier videos, if you've been with me since the beginning, we would talk about the size of melanocyte and why it's easier to trigger. And I always said one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment and we have to avoid anything that's gonna irritate the skin. And so that's how the channel started. And I would talk about percentage actives, uh, which ones you want to use, what's effective, what they're just using for marketing as a bit of a marketing gimmick. And also where people, where brands were overcharging because I'm a formulator myself, I've manufactured to my own products, I know the cost of niacinamide, I know the cost of lactic acid, I know the cost of packaging and manufacturing and distribution. So I know what a product should cost and where the fat is being put into the margin, which isn't directly benefiting you. So I'm so pleased to, to see that our skincare enthusiasm has gone through the roof and really you can talk to anyone about niacinamide now and they would know what you're talking about, which just wasn't the case a couple of years ago. So I'm uh, so pleased to see how far we've come. But two years ago or three years ago, the products that were on the market were a fraction of what we have today. And so, you know, if you asked me two years ago, which niacinamide I'd recommend, there were maybe two niacinamides on the market for me to choose from. So there just wasn't a huge offering for you. And so I'd have to choose between two not great products, which was the least worst. And that's actually the reason why I started manufacturing my own products when I realized just how little there was on the market for skin of color. For us, we want nothing that's gonna irritate our skin. No fragrance, no essential oils, no denatured alcohol. But we also need tyrosinase inhibitors. Those just didn't exist in combination, especially at the percentages that we require to treat hyperpigmentation. We also didn't have exfoliators that were gentle on our skin, but also brightened our skin. They're just, they're so, we were really lacking. And to be honest, even to this day, there still aren't that many more products that are great for skin of color, but it has improved. And so today's video is to honor that and to talk about all the products in the, that I would have recommended in the past, but now we have better options and that I would no longer recommend. And I'll go through the ones that I would recommend right now. Now, it's also important to say that skincare is continuously evolving. The skincare industry, this is not stagnant, right? So even two years from now, we're gonna be in a different situation, different position to where we are right now. And I'll probably have to go and make the video again. Hopefully by then we'll be on 200 million views, who knows? <laughs> but I will continue working hard for you for as long as you will me. Don't forget, I am in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single YouTube video. So when you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so you know that I'm here and I will do my best to answer as many questions as I can. You can also ask me questions on our Instagram. So I've got two accounts, Dr. Mita Rattan and Skincare by Dr. V. You can follow me on TikTok, which is Dr. Mita Rattan. And also come and join our private Facebook group called Dr. V Sock Family. And in there, you can also ask about your skincare questions. It's a wonderful community. You're likely to have people in your country with a similar skincare condition to you um, having gone through uh, their own skincare journey you can ask questions so without further ado let's dive right in Okay, so starting off with niacinamide. It was one of the first ingredients I think that we talked about a lot on this channel. And at the time, these are the ones that I would recommend. The Ordinary, the Inky List, Face Theory, Pore Bright, or Be Minimalist. And they all have 10% niacinamide. Now the problem is that clinical studies tend to recommend niacinamide at two to 5%. And more than that, you can react. And in addition, a lot of the creams on top and serums will also contain niacinamide. So if you've got niacinamide serum and then you have a moisturizer with niacinamide too and your face wash has got niacinamide, that's a lot on the skin and your skin can react. So I just wouldn't recommend it. And so instead I prefer Notorium niacinamide 2%. So just look for that two to 5%. For me, because I'm lazy and I wanted everything in one product, I put the 2% niacinamide plus ceramides and peptides into our moisturizer. Um, because I just wanted it all together. It just made my life a bit easier. 
and so this is what it looks like is a fatty moisturizer this is only going to be good for you if you come from a cold country or you have dry skin i would not recommend this particular product if you have oily acne prone skin or if you live in a hot country if that's the case then i would opt for our trio blemish pm gel which also contains two percent niacinamide but it's a gel lightweight moisturizer i'll just show you what that looks like that's the pm gel so this is, has all your tyrosinase inhibitors, so you can see it's a bit yellow. It's got your retinol, retinaldehyde in it too. So this is good for oily, acne-prone skin. It's very lightweight and helps with dark marks as well from post-acne. Let's just to show you what that looks like. But ultimately, just look for a fragrance-free serum with 2 to 5% niacinamide. It doesn't have to be this, it's just I'm showing you these. The second category of ingredients are retinols. So there are a series of retinols that I used to recommend because they were the only ones on the market. And now I'm going to tell you why there are better ones. Uh, so retinol, you want it, first of all, you want it ideally in combination with other antioxidants because it's a very unstable antioxidant. Very powerful, but also oxidizes incredibly quickly. So you need to make sure it's in an airless packaging. And you want to ideally have in combination with other antioxidants. So the ones I used to recommend was the Ordinary Retinol Serum, but it comes in a pipette. So there's oxygen around the vitamin A. The second is the Olay Regenerous Retinol 24, because again, it's got oxygen around it. Then I also recommended Base Theory Regina Balm, for the same reason I wouldn't now. And then there's a B minimalist 0.3% retinol. Again, that's in a pipette. So just avoid retinols in a pipette. Uh, instead, opt for airless pumps and obviously fragrance free because already retinol can be quite irritating. It's an alcohol retinol. And so you don't want any other irritants, no denatured alcohol or fragrance in there at the same time. Ones I like are Revolution Retinol, which is less than 1% in a moisturizer. It's Airless Pump, love it. The second one I like is a Versed Gentle Retinol Serum. The third I like is Paula's Choice 0.3% Retinol. And the, the last one I like is First Aid Retinol Serum, which is 0.25%. If you wanted a serum with retinol plus, so 0.1% retinol plus 0.1% retinaldehyde, uh, plus vitamin C and coenzyme Q10, you can get our antioxidant power serum. And it's the only formula in the world that contains both retinol and retinaldehyde plus vitamin C and coenzyme Q10. And retinaldehyde works 11 times faster than retinol, so you can see it just melts directly into the skin. But yes, go for what's in your price budget, but these are the ones that I would recommend. Moving on to vitamin C. Vitamin C is the same problem. We need to make sure it's an airless pump. We want to make sure it's in combination. It is an unstable antioxidant. So the ones I used to recommend were Face Theory Regina C20. I do love the fact that it's vitamin C, ethyl ascorbic acid. It's very stable. It converts well, but you still, it's still really should be in an airless pump. The next one I used to recommend was from the Ordinary Ascorbic Acid 8% plus Alpha Arbutin. I did love the fact that it had a tyrosinase inhibitor with the vitamin C, but again, it's in a pipette. The Ordinary, if you put that into an airless pump, I would highly recommend it. The next one is a B Minimalist Vitamin C 10%, again, that's in a pipette. And generally, a lot of brands were really just copying the Ordinary, but if you're just copying without thinking and iterating, then you tend to make the same mistakes because you haven't questioned how can I do this better so you tend to find you know the ordinary came up with this 10% niacinamide and suddenly all the brands decided to make 10% niacinamide but without really questioning it so you know for me that's just an indication that there's a lack of thought process happening I would want to see how can you improve upon you know what the offering is so the vitamin C's I like right now on the market would be First Aid Beauty 10%, that's 3-O ethyl ascorbic acid plus licorice root extract, but it is expensive, it's $50. The second one is Paula's Choice Antioxidant Serum, again it is quite expensive, it's $41. The Inky List is good and it's, it's more affordable, so that's 15% vitamin C plus C, G, and F. And if you wanted, again, vitamin A, C, and E together with coenzyme Q10, you can of course use our retinol with retinaldehyde. Okay, so other products I used to recommend. Uh, so I used to recommend the tub version of CeraVe that they have now rectified and put a pump on it so you can make that airless because ceramides, again, are unstable in oxygen. So I'm glad that they've rectified that. The second thing I used to recommend was the CeraVe eye cream. But to be honest, it's just CeraVe plus niacinamide at a multiple of the cost of the CeraVe cream. So why not just use 
I said a mild plus Sarah B, you know, it's much cheaper. So that's definitely not worth it. To be honest, I'm so underwhelmed with the number of eye creams on the market and how terrible they are. You know, the vast majority are just a moisturizer with hardly anything in it. The skin around the eye is thinner. It does need different actives. It does need tyrosinase inhibitors, especially if you have dark circles. You do want to stimulate collagen. Um, that has to be in an Ella's pump. You know, they're a very specific things needed for the eye area that no one has managed to put together into one product that I would be proud to stand behind. And so, you know, this is something I'm working on behind, you know, in the lab for you, but I don't know when that's going to come to market. So it is on my to-do list. I know a lot of people have asked me to make this. It is happening. Just give me a few months. <laughs> the next category of ingredients that I used to recommend were hyaluronic acid. So Vichy, HA, and the ordinary. Those are two I used to recommend. But do you know what? It's just not worth an additional step because your moisturizers are going to have glycerin in it or hyaluronic acid in it. They're already going to have humectants in it. There's no point actually putting on another layer of humectants. Plus, you're wasting time, money, but also a whole layer of actives. You could easily be using, say, for example, 2% alpha arbutin if you had hyperpigmentation, or you could be using 2% salicylic acid if you had oily acne prone skin. And if you're wasting a layer, on an active that's not really doing much for you and then you put on another layer on top of a different serum it's not really going to penetrate into the skin so now you've wasted your time money it's not as effective it's just not worth it i just you know there's a whole craze about hyaluronic acid at one point but honestly i think let's just move on and realize we will have glycerin in our moisturizer and that's plenty these are the moisturizers that I really like that are on the market right now. So I really like Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. It's got glycerin as a humectant. I was really shocked to actually like anything from Kiehl's, to be honest, because 99% of the products I absolutely do not like and yeah, just shouldn't even be, have been reformulated, to be honest. But this particular product, they did very well in. And I don't know whether they just had a different formulator make this one product, but I love it and I would recommend it. The next product is Eucerin Ultra Sensitive Soothing Cream. It's got glycerin in it. If you do want a brightening anti-aging moisturizer with your ceramized peptides and licorice root extract, you can use our set of pep brightening moisturizer. The next category of ingredients I used to recommend was sheet masks. And um, again, it became so viral. It was such a Korean skincare hack that everybody was doing it. But you know what? A lot of them aren't biodegradable. They're very bad for the environment. They don't really have any actives in there that none of them that I'm that excited about. It's actually better for you to have, use your serum, your moisturizer, and then use a reusable uh, face mask that you can literally just buy from Amazon and just use it on for an hour to occlude the skin. It's cheaper, you know it's fragrance free, and it's better for the environment. The seventh thing that I used to recommend was microneedling at home, but recently I've seen quite a lot of infections from people not sterilizing their microneedles sufficiently. So even in our clinic, we used to use brand new microneedles every time to make sure there was no bacteria. And the bottom line is that bathrooms are pretty disgusting places. It's a humid environment. You've got mold growing and you have bacteria in the air. It's just not a sterile environment to leave your microneedle and then keep reusing it. So for me, the cost benefit just doesn't add up. The next thing I used to recommend was when I would talk about layering the ordinary. The problem is that for skin of color, we need so many actives. We need a group of different tyrosinase inhibitors. Plus you want your antioxidants. Plus we need ceramides, peptides. We need so much on the skin that when you layer one thing on top of another, you're not really getting penetration by the time you get to the second and third layer. But we need all those actives. And so I would do videos saying which products I like from The Ordinary, which is fine. But actually when we're doing our routines, they just weren't that effective for our skin. So yes, they're cheap. Yes, I love the ingredients. But with us, we need cocktail creams. We need products that have all the actives in one cream. So they literally all hit the skin at the same time. They all penetrate at the same time. and You get maximum effectiveness, but they do tend to be more expensive. So even though I have done layering videos in the past, which are fine and they're good, and they're affordable, they're not going to be the most effective because really for skin of color, we do tend to need more actives in a cocktail cream. Please can you write down below which videos you want me to make next? So I'm writing my scripts and usually on Instagram, I will ask you questions. I tend to do polls. So any products I'm gonna make in the future, I tend to ask you actually. So if you are on Instagram, please do follow me on that if you wanna be involved in any future products that we make. Uh, but thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next time. Take care, bye.